Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be answering a very important question. What affects your landing distance? Before we get started, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video if you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. First of all, let's define the landing distance. Well, the landing distance is the distance of the aircraft in the landing phase and starts from the screen height of 50 feet above the runway threshold until the airplane comes to a complete and full stop on the runway. Now, even if you fly the same airplane to the same airport regularly, the landing distance required is almost never the same, and the reason is due to multiple factors. We will review the most dominant ones. First is the weight of the airplane, and then density of the air, surface wind, flap settings, runway slope, runway condition. There are other factors which also affect the landing distance, such as threshold crossing height. If you happen to cross the runway threshold higher than 50 feet, this will also affect your landing distance. Final approach speed, if it's higher than VRF, will result in a longer landing distance, and so on. The uh, pilot handling skills also play a role, but in the video we will only focus on the main contributing factors. Now let's look at each of the factors individually in more detail. The weight. As the weight of the aircraft increases, so does the stalling speed, thus increasing the final approach airspeed, also known as VRF, which in turn reduces the deceleration force due to high kinetic energy or high momentum, therefore increasing the landing distance. Next, we have density. Air density affects true airspeed, TAS, as well as power. Low density and when we say low air density, we refer to high temperature, high humidity, and low pressure. These three combined. This means thin air and lesser air molecules, which would not help in friction to decelerate the aircraft. This is why low density or high density altitude, which is the same, results in an increase in landing distance. And the opposite holds true. Next, we have wind. A headwind decreases the ground speed for any given indicated airspeed. Thus, in case of a headwind, the forward speed over the ground is much less, and as a result, the distance required to bring an aircraft to a stop is reduced. The opposite is true for tailwind, as it increases the landing distance because of a higher ground speed. For landing performance calculation and for safety reasons, only 50% of headwind and 150% of tailwinds are accounted for in the calculation to increase the safety margin. Next, we have flap setting. Flaps are high lift devices used to increase the camber of the wing in order to generate more lift at low airspeeds, especially during landing, thereby reducing the landing distance. However, the use of high flap setting will dramatically increase the aerodynamic drag as well, which is a benefit in the landing because it helps the airplane slow down. However, in the other hand, should the landing be aborted by the crew and the crew decides to go around, the climb gradient will be significantly shallow due to high drag from the high flap settings. Okay? Now, runway slope. This one is straightforward. Upslope will help the airplane decelerate, thus reducing the landing distance, and the downslope will increase the landing distance for obvious reasons. For every 1% upslope, the landing distance is affected by 5%. Keep this one in mind. And last but not least, runway condition. Dry, paved, and hard surface is the best for braking actions unlike wet, slippery, and contaminated runways, or even grass runways. They all reduce the braking capability, thus resulting in a longer landing distance. Now, one last thing I would like to cover is the safety factor of 1.43 or 1.44 sometimes. This is a safety regulation factor added to the calculated gross performance to obtain your net performance. The net performance is the performance that the airplane will achieve 99.99% of the time, taking into consideration all factors that may have not been accounted for in the testing phase of the airplane, such as uh, average pilot skills, 
and techniques, airplane and engine wear with time, poor braking actions, etc. So whatever you calculate off of your um, POH or aircraft flight manual, you get the gross performance, landing distance. Then you multiply that by this factor, 1.43, and you get the net performance. Okay? All right, we have come to the end of this video. If you guys have found it helpful, kindly consider subscribing and also give it a like to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching and until the next video, see ya.